Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, all of you said you were at this morning's incident with Brightline, and I want to share with you the victim of this morning's Brightline incident. This occurred this morning at approximately 9 a.m. This is 25-year-old Brandon Ryder Mayer. And shortly after 9 a.m. this morning, like I said, uh, the incident occurred within the 4400 block of South Indian River Drive, which is just north of Midway Road. What we have learned during our initial investigation is that Brandon was homeless and sadly there is a strong evidence to suggest that he may potentially have committed suicide in this incident. We're asking the public to keep uh, this young man's family and friends in your thoughts and prayers and if you know of Brandon's uh, activities the past 24 hours or his state of mind if you would call us and share that information with us. At this time, we're unable to provide any other information about the incident because we're still investigating it. But if the public has some knowledge of uh, Brandon's activities and mental status, please share that with us. That would help us tremendously. Any questions? Where, is, where did he get struck? Was it at Midway Road? I know the train stopped down, down a ways north of Midway. But it was about... Um, quarter mile north? Quarter and a half mile north of Midway, and the train was going north. Any other questions? Greg? By himself? Yes, he was by himself. Yes, sir. Do we have any indication of the speed at which the train was going at? Great question. We do not. Can you spell his name? Sure. His name is Brandon, B R A N D E N, Ryder, R I D E R, Mayer, M E Y E R. Is he local? He is not local. He is homeless. There are a couple of homeless camps uh, near the Savannah State Park in that area. We're still searching those, uh, those camps. Um, where's he originally from, guys? Do you know? Don't know? Family's from Lake, uh, Lake City. Or Lake, Lake, Lake County, sorry. Lake County. That's where we notified his family in Lake County. Do we know, like, details of, you know, whether the train was blaring in Thornton or... As part of the investigation on RN and Brightline. Okay, who was at last week's homicide scene? Will, you were off, if I remember. I remember that. Okay. Last week, tragically, we had a homicide one week ago today. I want to give you an update on who that victim was. And uh, it happened, uh, as I said, last Thursday, the 3300 block of South 7th Street and we were called there again shortly after 9 a.m. to investigate a homicide. I announced that, that that was a homicide before we left the scene. The victim in this case is 33 year old David Christian Wallace, all common spelling. David Christian Wallace. What we can tell you that he was a victim of a homicide and that he was shot in one of the apartments located at that site. We're asking anyone to provide information that they know of David's whereabouts or activities also and the identity of anybody he was with in the hours preceding his death. We believe this is an isolated incident and there is no immediate threat to our public. If you have information, we want you to contact detectives on this case, 462-3230, repeating again, 462 3230 or Treasure Coast Crime Stoppers where you can remain anonymous and be paid for the information. That number is 772-273-TIPS uh, or one 273 tips Yes, Will. For those, um, would you mind reviewing like the, the fact that as much as you can in terms of like how you guys discovered the, how the, um, the homicide was discovered or what led you there? Um, Mr. Wallace was an employer who was conversing with his employee the night previously. He asked his employee to come pick him up for work at 6 a.m. The employee arrived there. Mr. Wallace did not answer the door. The employee went and found a third party to open the door and they both found him deceased in the apartment. Okay. 
And th that was Mr. Wallace's apartment that he was found in, or? Actually, uh, yes, it was. I was already saying, I don't think it was, but it was. It was his apartment. And he lived there alone. Go ahead. I, um, can you say whether you believe the, the, the gun, the shooting happened inside his own apartment? Because I know you said we have one of the apartments there. We believe the shooting occurred inside his apartment. And we gave a time frame uh, last week of 9 p.m. to 9 a.m. So 9 p.m. the previous night to 9 a.m. the day that we responded to the scene. Did he live alone? or He, li like he lived alone. He lived alone. Okay. What kind of work did he do? He did tile work, and uh, actually on his shirt, I believe, is the name of either the company that he operated or a company that he subbed for. Uh, but he did tile work uh, throughout the county, and uh, he did have uh, a couple of employees. This morning he had one of his employees uh, come over to, to pick him up and take him to a job site, but of course he didn't answer the door. How about any other questions? Greg, oh, you always got a good question. No? Good. I got one more about the other one. Cassandra, let's go. Sorry's question. So what are you guys doing um, to ensure the safety of the community at these railroad tracks? At the railroad tracks? Mm -hmm. Well, uh, when Brightline notified us that they were coming through town uh, and the speeds they were coming, we did a big social media blitz warning our community of the facts this would not be a normal train coming through it would be one that's traveling very fast that's uh, what we did a couple of months ago and we have a, a unit our community engagement unit goes to many homeowners meetings throughout the county they have reiterated those warnings to homeowners groups and you know this is kind of like a common sense thing when you approach a railroad track you should stop look and listen and if you do that I think everyone will be safer. Go ahead. Can I switch back to Mr. Wallace? Sure. Um, when I guess if he was shot inside of his apartment um, was the door locked? Because one would think that it, only his assailant would have been the last person to see him I guess and so in that you know was, was the door locked I guess you know because one would think it would be tough to lock the door that's a good presumption to make, but we're not going to tell you if the door is locked or unlocked. I can tell you that when his employee came, he didn't answer the door, and a third party entered, and that's where we found him. So this place uh, ramshack? Won't, won't say that either. Sorry. All we're doing is asking the public's help if they know Mr. Wallace, who his accomplices were, who he was with uh, in the hours preceding his homicide, um, what activities he was involved in that would help us tremendously. Was his uh, vehicle broke down? I mean, why did he need a ride? Was that normal? He did not have a vehicle. All right, thank you.